That sound is the explosion in downtown Nashville, which authorities are calling an intentional act. The FBI is now heading the investigation, working to determine who might be responsible. And we're learning breaking new details tonight, including the discovery of what authorities believe to be human remains near the scene. And in your crime and safety alert tonight, a Toledo man is behind bars, charged with attacking a man and cutting him several times. According to court documents, 55-year-old Hobart Johnson is charged with felonious assault. President Trump has not yet formally rejected the coronavirus relief bill that passed in Congress. However, he says he won't sign it into law unless it includes more money in stimulus checks to most American households. Turning now to the latest local COVID-19 data, new numbers of positive cases in Ohio show the infection rate remains high and in the last 24 hours more than 6,800 cases were reported. Earlier in our broadcast we showed you how newer local businesses are doing on this small business Saturday. A father-son duo is lighting up Oregon with tens of thousands of lights and they're bonding at the same time. Hot chocolate is a staple indulgence for many including myself during the holiday season and our annual toy drive is in its 10th year and you can make it the biggest and best yet. Police are still investigating an officer involved shooting that all began with a suspected armed robbery at this stop and go on West Alexis Road. You know, battalion chief tells me two adults and four children were inside when the fire started, but they were able to make it out without any injuries. Detectives are on scene now to find out the cause of the fire. Jeff, we know that there are a lot of household products that can be hard to find on grocery store shelves nowadays, especially things like bleach, disinfectant, and other types of cleaning products. But she was even more concerned when she closed her salon and found out that Petco, right down the street from her business, was still offering their grooming services. They cannot open up that gun range until the Sylvania City Council votes yes on a special use zoning permit. Springtime means it's walleye fishing season out on Lake Erie but yet no motorboats are allowed on the water, making Michigan's extended stay-at-home order a controversial issue for many outdoorsmen. The Dundee Police Department still wanted to hold their annual shop with a cop this year with a twist. It was a hot weekend here as well as performers and Air Force members are cooling off right before a lot of these planes prepare for takeoff. These shoppers are rushing home with their treasures right about now here at the shops at Fallen Timbers. In fact, I just walked into Dillard's and I happened to speak with a sales associate who mentioned that just yesterday they sold over $12,000 just in handbags, and I happen to uh, contribute to more of that just now. Uh, re remar remarkable. Yes, that, right? <laughs> that was that the, the word. word, yes. Good choice of word, remarkable. Remarkable Rachel. That, that would be my magician name. That's good, we cracked it. <laughs> let's go to the theater. Oh, no. And without getting too many bruises, let's see if we can take this baby all the way home and get it all the way back to the station. We were able to make history. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel is the first person to ever catch air on her 18 obstacle Jeep off road course. I spoke with Lynn Gibbs, president of Oregon's Republican Club. On their way back from the Capitol, she tells me her first hand account of what they experienced today. What happened when they got near the steps is anybody's guess. Lynn Gibbs and 22 others from the Oregon Republican Club traveled to Washington, D.C. She says buses from every major city in Ohio followed along as thousands of Trump supporters across the nation converged for a rally. But what happened next, she says she never saw coming. It was very peaceful. And then all of a sudden they went to the Capitol building and that's when it broke loose. Gibbs says she was standing near the Washington Monument. They had speakers all morning and then they had the president spoke at about 1130, quarter to 12. And after that, they asked everybody to... Um, walk down to the Capitol as a sure show of support. They did breach the building and they did go inside the Senate chamber. There were some people in our group that saw the tear gas. Then I started texting our group, got the car and started transporting groups back to the hotel. 
On the drive back, Gibbs tells me how she was there to support the challenge to the Electoral College count. The people inside the building uh, with Trump flags, I think maybe there was a sense that is this the only thing we can do? There's frustration and anger. They want the republic to stay the way it is. But as peaceful as the rest of the event she describes was, she says the violence that followed is never the answer. It is not reflective of the whole party. It, it is a faction that is angry, and I hope, and I hope, and I pray as a Republican leader that we find out exactly who went into that building first and who decided to use violence to go inside that building. And as of now, the group is still on their way back to Lucas County. Lynn tells me everyone in their group was accounted for, but nobody was close enough to the building to see exactly who or what started the siege on the Capitol. Reporting live, Rachel Schneider, 13 ABC Action News. Toledo City Councilwoman called for 48 hours of no gun violence this past Friday. That call went unanswered after multiple shootings and a homicide. 13 ABC's Rachel Schneider is live tonight with an update on this story. Rachel. Christina Councilwoman Sir Sandra McPherson says she is not backing down yet. She still believes the city can work together to end gun violence. I'm heartbroken. Not so much that we didn't make the 48 hours, but that someone had to go tell a mother that she just lost a son. Less than 24 hours after the call to put the guns down, a man was shot dead. Toledo City Councilwoman Sir Sandra McPherson gathered with community members Sunday evening at Swainfield Shopping Center, saying she's not giving up. I want to help make this city a better place for our young people. This weekend, McPherson experienced gun violence close to home when a man was shot and killed on Blum Street in central Toledo Saturday night, the same neighborhood where her daughter lives. It's the family last night, I got to watch it firsthand. Open my window and there's a young man dead in front of my house. Not only do you affect the families of the person that you kill, you affect the families around the people that you've killed. McPherson says she wants young people in need to reach out, and she is promising to work with the Toledo police, the NAACP, and other city leaders, including mothers who've lost their children to gun violence. This is not defeat. This is not failure. Right. This just means we need to go back to the right. drawing table. Right. Right. This just means we need to work this thing a little bit harder. She came out here tonight in the snow, could have given up and said, oh, it was a failure. But for her, it was not. And then you saw the tears of those mothers who were here tonight who have lost children to gun violence. For them, this was not a failure. To them, this was a call to action. And so far, the city of Toledo has recorded 54 homicides this year, sadly inching closer to the record set back in 1980 when the city recorded 60 murders that year. Reporting live, Rachel Schneider, 13 ABC Action News.